Welcome to another episode of Soap Thing Thoughts. Joining me today is Chris from DE Razor Shaving. Welcome to the Soap Thing Project. How are you doing today? I'm doing pretty good, man. How are you? Doing excellent. Uh, I was kind of excited to have you on the show because I love your your energy. You're kind of a high intensity individual, so I'm I'm uh, really excited about this particular uh, conversation. So, tell us. The first question I always ask everybody is, how did you get into wet shaving on camera? Talk about your origins, so to speak. Um, well, when I first, first started, I didn't know what a YouTuber was, and I didn't know, like, anything like that. When I first got into, like, wet shaving and everything, um, my ex fiance she showed me the movie Sweeney Todd. And we were, I'm like, it's a musical. I really don't want to watch this. And she's like, just watch it. You don't want to watch it. Go in the other room. I'm like, all right, cool. She's like, this guy kills people with straight razors. I'm all, all right, I'm kind of intrigued. <laughs> so I watched the movie and I wasn't really concerned about like, you know, his vigilante killing with straight razors. I was like, I wonder if people actually still shave like that. So I went on the internet and I found Razor Emporium. And I'm like, first of all, I thought about like mom and pop shops. I thought they would sell like straight razors and stuff like that wrong it didn't work that way yeah so, so drove no so i drove down to razor and Poor. i'm like these guys are in phoenix these guys are like 30 minutes away from me went down there lo and behold started going down the rabbit hole blah 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 and then one of the guys was working there and he goes do you guys you ever watch stuff on youtube and i'm like no not really i mean i watch car stuff and all that kind of stuff like how-to videos he's like check out this guy douglas smith and the guy works here in matt Pasarsic. they got a show called lather be shaving i'm all Okay, that kind of sounds cool. So I started watching that. And then I started watching other YouTubers. And when I first started, I wasn't, I didn't know what a YouTuber was. I didn't know any of the people. I didn't know who Ken Surfs was. What I did is I went on YouTube and I searched products. I'm like, okay, Gillette Fatboy. And I watched all these people use the Gillette Fatboy. <clears throat> and eventually I started gravitating toward like Ken Surfs, Paul H Films, all the big guys that are in there. I'm all, okay, so I started following those guys. And then watch them for a bit. I'm all, I got a collection. I've got my stuff. They're just regular dudes like me. I'm like, maybe I should try this YouTube thing. And so I sat it for like a couple weeks. And I told my ex fiance, I'm like, I kind of want to do this, but I'm nervous. And she's like, what are you nervous about? Just do it. She's like, all these other people do it. Why don't you just do it? I'm all, uh, I don't know. And she's like, quit being a wuss and get in the bathroom and go do it, Chris. I'm like, all right, cool. So did that and <clears throat> lo and behold i am here now so yeah that's a that's a little bit of a, a journey because i'd rather be shaving uh that was a while ago yeah how long how long have you been on youtube then um i think three or four years i actually did i had a whole bunch of videos and i, I was going through some crap in my head and I was really like drinking a lot really bad. And I one day in a drunken haze, I deleted all my videos. And then I woke up the next day and I was like, oh my God, what the hell did I just do? It's like, you bonehead. So I told myself, I'm like, all right, I'm never going to ever delete a video ever again. So if you go to my YouTube channel and it's the rabbit banana, my very first video on my YouTube channel, I kind of explained it in the beginning, like you guys wonder what happened to me. I just had a meltdown, blah, blah, blah. And I didn't really explain it in the video because I was just like kind of embarrassed about it and stuff. But now I, I could totally talk about it and be like, yeah, I was, I was a freaking idiot and deleted my, my channel being drunk. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I've been there. I, I quit drinking in, uh, in 2012 and uh, I had an episode that damn near killed me. And so I quit drinking for six years. And then when I went deployed to Spain for six months, I, in the space of that time, I had kind of figured out uh, where my threshold was, like where I need to cut myself off. And so now I'll I'll have a few drinks ceremoniously. I'm a big guy. Uh, I'm a big whiskey drinker. I like to sip a neat Buffalo Trace or, you know, uh, Woodford Reserve, Angels Envy, that sort of thing just every once in a while. But I used to I used to guzzle buy out bottles of wild turkey and uh I'm never drinking that stuff again because anything you have a bad episode with, you usually tend to just, just looking at it makes you like, nope, not doing it. 
Uh, oh yeah, I've. But uh, but to your point, uh, one of the things I I'm glad you mentioned uh, actually deleting your videos because I have a uh, a giant like six terabyte hard drive full of every video I've ever recorded, even the demos from before I did my first video. Because before I did shave number one and the soap thing project, I did like 40 demos uh, just to make sure I had the camera angle right, the volume right, the the audio gain, the exposure, the, light, the brightness, and that I toyed with uh, showcasing products in this order or that order, doing it this way or that way. And uh, so by the time I did my first video, I was like ready to go. So, uh, so I think uh, it might be a good idea for you other content creators out there uh, you might consider backing up your stuff for uh because i've uh, came really close to accidentally deleting videos that were, were up already i was like ooh, because i will upload videos and then stage them out like into the future and uh and then kind of proof watch them to make sure that there's no funny business that it has to i have to go back into the to adobe and re-edit stuff and I've almost clicked delete on the wrong button on the wrong video to where it was just like, oh, crap, that almost ended badly. But, yeah, make sure you're uh, you're backing up your stuff. It might be a be a smart idea. OK. Now, the the topic of today's video is let's just talk about shave brushes. I uh, I have a, a couple. Uh, I'm, I don't have access to my full collection back in the States, but I do have a few that I've gotten since I got here that I'm really proud of. And we can just talk about some of our, some of our more favorite brushes and, and what we prefer our personal preferences when we're thinking about buying a brush. Uh, so I know you have a bunch of, uh, of rich man shaving brushes. I can see those directly behind you. Yeah, right there. So uh, let's just uh, go fetch one of them. Let's, let's talk about what's your, uh, what's your favorite out of those? Um, <clears throat> probably at the moment, this one. Yeah, you have this a bunch is... of blood oils. So I'll we'll talk about that. What, what What is he going for when he made those? It's like a this uh, blood red resin poured into clear with a with a razor blade in there. Yeah, it's this one is the well. He calls this one the um, white top blood oil. So it's mm -hmm. got the white, but it's um, when you have it in hand, you can actually see it more. You can see like the the prism in there, like the rainbowish kind of colors. Like yeah. here is like it's hard to like kind of see it right there, but not yeah, really. Yeah, the camera can pick it up just a little bit. Yeah, and then you got the coin on there, and this is a twenty six millimeter ultra lux, really really soft. And mm -hmm. there's a feather blade in there. And this one was actually at the what was it the mid the Idaho um meetup that they had like last year before. Yeah, and this was one of one of the rate one of the brushes that was on the table for sale and nobody bought it. So I reached out to Anthony Vincent and I go, does Rich still have that brush, dude? And he's like, yeah, no, it didn't sell at the meet. I'm all, dude, can you see if he can like hook it up? I want to buy that brush from him. He's like, yeah, yeah. And so Rich, uh, <clears throat> Rich man messaged me. He's like, yeah, you go ahead. What, what not you want in it? And I told him, he's like, all right, PayPal, friends and family, blah, 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 blah. So yeah, like all my blood. Load, yeah, this is probably my favorite one. It's got the, you can see it's got the metal shavings in there. Yeah, yeah, really, really cool though. But yeah, it's real. I soft. love that, like that, like a gravity pour of blood red that goes into that. That was a, a clever idea on his part. Oh yeah, it just drips like right down in there. Like, yeah, I don't know how he how he captured that in like the resin. It looks so cool though. Uh, very carefully, that's how they do it. <laughs> I don't um, know anything about brush making. Yeah, um, one of them that I got here. I'm a big uh, Wolf Whiskers guy. I think I have like five Wolf Whiskers brushes. And I was lucky enough to get on the waiting list while I was over here. And I do have this one right here. This is a blue train with a uh, blue and black resin poured into a clear base. And if you, I'm not sure if I can show it on here. Let me grab my flashlight because it's really fascinating. Okay. So this brush, if you kind of take a light to it. It's a uh, semi translucent. Look at that. Isn't that fascinating? So, um, 
Wolf Whiskers, uh, Peter Wolf has uh, slowed down making brushes a lot lately, but I was uh, lucky enough to get on his wait list and then score a spot to get the, this particular shape. I can't remember what this shape is called. I'll put it at the bottom of the screen, but this has a 24 millimeter Black Wolf, really soft, uh, synthetic, not excellent stuff. Um, my For me personally, uh, in recent, I would say in the last year and a half, I got to wear... I don't prefer larger knots because like at one point I had like five rich man shaving brushes and I sold every single one of them. And, uh, and the singular reason was I, I discovered rich man shaving right before I decided that I didn't like big brushes and rich makes some big ass freaking brushes. Like the, his handles are like huge. So, um, yeah, exactly. So, but uh, but as I got to be better at lathering, I realized that I uh, big brushes, big knots, like 26, 28, 30 millimeters, they really weren't doing me any favors. It's kind of like titties in a funny way, you know? It's like, uh, you know, the more, after you've had like, your fourth or fifth boob job, it gets to where they're just so big that it's like not sexy anymore. <laughs> but uh, I don't know where that came from. But uh, but ever since then, I've been I've been going straight towards like twenty four and twenty two millimeter. I don't, a lot of people don't have brushes that small, but I uh, but here's an example one. This is an Eric Sorrentino brush. This is a uh, just a black with gold metallic resin. Let's see if I can get some light on that. Yeah, maybe not. But yeah, this is actually a 22 millimeter. It's got a 22 millimeter Maggard uh, G5. And uh, this does just as good a job as, as a 24. And uh, I've actually started finding that 26 and 20 mil millimeter brushes tend to be a little cumbersome. Like it just gets to where it's, it's just too big for me. What, what, what are your thoughts? Yeah, because I've got I've got this AP Shave Co. Hulk one. This is the biggest one I have, 30 millimeter. Um I can't remember the top of my head, but yeah, it's it's huge. I mean, look at that. It's just I wanted to I wanted to try a 30 millimeter because it was like back then everyone's like, yeah, it's so cool. I'm get one. I'm like, dude, I'm not a head shaver, but that would be pretty dang perfect if you were. But for face, it's it's a little bit too much, you know? Yeah. So and then the total opposite spectrum of that, I do have a Smiles for Miles. Um, this is an actual 20 millimeter badger knot in there. And it's, you know, totally different yeah. thing right there. But this little one, this this is not a bad little, it whips a lather up. It's small. It's nice and scratchy. I mean, yeah, that it's good. So, yeah, well, well one of the things about, uh, about smaller brushes is, um, well, let me, let me rephrase. As you get bigger in brushes, there's kind of a lot of diminishing returns where it's not exactly going to do much more for you. It might cover more real estate on your face, but it's not going to make it any easier to generate a lather. At least I don't think so, because I get uh, just as good, just as high quality, and just as quick a lather out of a 24 and 22 millimeter brush than I did out of like a 28 uh, and it, like, like you said, it takes up less space. Uh, the, the funny thing is historically shaved brushes were, were quite small, 18 and 20 millimeters, like way back in the day, like, uh, forties, fifties, sixties, uh, 22 millimeters would have been considered relatively large. Uh, 26, 28 and 30 would have been considered hysterical. Like people would have thought you were compensating for something. Um, uh, but uh, here, here's another one. This is uh, from Viking Shaving Soaps. He went for a while where he wasn't making brushes, and then he had a short stint where he was making brushes again. So he made me this uh, cool little uh, black on amber acrylic 22 millimeter with an Odin's beard. Uh, great, great stuff. Um, when when you're when you're looking for a brush, uh, what what is what are the the top two or three priorities for you? Um, first of all, aesthetics. Like, if it looks cool, I'm gonna buy it. Like, it's gotta look cool. If it doesn't, you know, like, 
I don't know, I guess I'm kind of vain like that. Um, like when I seen like the Razor Pour Ambrush, <clears throat> when I first saw that at their shop, I like I didn't care if it was Badger, I didn't care if it was synthetic or anything. I'm like, I want that handle. That handle is so damn cool. So I bought it, and then I'm like, oh yeah, it's Badger, but it doesn't matter. So yeah, so aesthetics first of all. Um, I don't know. Just look looks wise. Uh, performance wise um, I don't know just look wise if it looks cool then I go I all buy it <laughs> yeah I mean I mean it doesn't have to be any deeper than that uh, <clears throat> me particularly I have a a particular addiction to really interesting looking handmade brushes like I have my fair share of uh what I, I wouldn't say my, my first thought was throwaway brushes, but that's kind of a, a poor term for it. I have my fair share of brushes that are more utilitarian. Like I can throw it in my luggage and, and if it disappears, I'm like, oh, whatever. But uh, some other brushes, it's uh, I appreciate them for the fact that it was hard to make. Like like this one right here. Here's another Sorrentino brush. And I don't know if you can see this, but it's got this effervescent kind of air bubbles to it. And yeah. uh, this will make it show up any better. Yeah, a little bit. <laughs> but yeah, basically, this this was actually insanely hard for, for Eric to make. Um, he basically had to make a brush shell and then drill it out on the inside and then pour the effervescent uh, resin into the center because you can't you can't sand that. That'd be practically impossible. And then he poured the uh, the kind of Pepsi blue uh, metallic resin on, on top of that. And so this is a, basically a brush within a brush. It's relatively fragile. Like you wouldn't want to put this in insanely hot water to uh, to yank the knot out. And so I had him use um, silicone sealant so that if I ever want to take this this twenty four millimeter maggard bore out. It's a lot easier to do it and it won't damage the brush, but that was uh, crazy difficult for for him to make. And I, I have a particular appreciation for, for the fact that it has to be handmade, I guess. Um, when it comes to like where the rubber meets the road, what do I need a, a brush to do? I'm a big advocate of badger brushes that are relatively low density because they don't eat lather quite like a uh, a more high density knot does it like have you ever have you ever had a uh, the brush just freaking cookie monster your lather and it just disappears on the brush yeah it get like it absorbs it yeah there's um like this one right here i put a uh, it's a maggards let me see if i can grab it Ooh. this is an opus brush got the smile and then this is a um it's a 26 millimeter uh shd and it is super freaking dense so yeah. but yeah it's i just wanted to go for like a really cool um high density brush in there because i never tried one so i wanted to put one in this hand so but yeah it's <laughs> it'll absorb everything just like suck it right up so yeah uh opus makes a uh, phenomenal brushes i and there's uh, no rhyme or reason or predictability to that guy he just makes seemingly random stuff that i uh, yeah uh, like it seems like every brush he makes is just like straight out of left field like there was one time i got a 30 millimeter bore brush from him that was so unwieldy i was just like i can't work this thing i ended up uh, i ended up by uh, having it swapped out for a 30 millimeter badger and it was um, uh, J.R. Reyes of Reyes Restores who pulled the knot and replaced it with a badger. And he was like, hey, this 30 millimeter bore is kind of cool. Can I keep it? And I was like, well, you took it out. I don't care what you do with it. Yeah. <laughs> so he's got that uh, that knot now, that gigantic 30 millimeter bore. It was a, that was a crazy knot. Um, so I noticed you keep your brushes in those like, um, they're basically spice racks. I have tried for months to try to find those and I can't, I can't freaking find them. I don't know what happened to them. 
I was when I first got those, um, I got them off Amazon, and they are just spice racks. I do have some more in my room, like a couple of them. But I was searching for first. I was searching for the the white ones that look like this, and mm -hmm. then you just take the you just take the brush and you go like that. And I was yeah. like, those don't those don't seem really um, durable. Like I knock it, I think it would fall off or something. So I'm like, I saw these ones. And I was like, oh, dude, these are awesome. So I bought a couple boxes. <laughs> And then I put them up, I changed the shaved in around, and then I told everybody about it. And then like not even a month later, they're all sold out. And I remember uh, Anthony Vinton's like, dude, you went on Amazon, you showed it on your YouTube channel, and you sold it out to the whole world. I'm like, not my fault. I don't, I did that. I'm like, because now I can't even find them anywhere. <clears throat> like on eBay, Amazon, it's like they've like, they're gone. So <laughs> yeah i get it uh, i've been looking for brush display solutions for a long time so if anybody's got any creative ideas of uh, places i can look uh put it in the comment section of the video one of the things that I, i'm doing recently with my collection back in the states is using um makeup display racks that you can get like like one of them i got from a sephora that was going out of business and the same thing, it's like I try to find it online and I cannot figure out where to find the same thing to get more of them. And so it's just like, oh, you know, this the there's there's not a lot of uh, structural support for this uh, for this kind of hobby. You kind of have to get creative. Uh, which uh, which of your brushes would you say has the most sentimental value? Ooh, like I like a, I will lay down and die before I get rid of this. <laughs> um, man, that's a tough one. I got a lot. Um, huh. Dang, that's a, that's a tough one, man. Uh, probably this one. This is my Mojo Curvel. I think Curvel. I think it's, I don't remember the name off the top of my head, but yeah. This thing is so freaking amazing. Like, yeah, it's never leaving here. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I've got okay, a couple so of. Uh... The, oh, that that is cool. The sparkle that he did that. Oh man. Oh, the yeah. fact that he the fact that he quit making brushes, I was like, oh man, I'm so angry. Because uh yeah. I have two brushes from him. One's a purple one and, and the other is my uh Miami Vice brush that I've featured on the channel a few times. And I was like just starting to dip my toes into into his brush making skills. And then he for good reason uh quit making brushes. But yeah, I think my my Miami Vice brush uh is one that uh I am absolutely uh, never, never letting that thing go. And uh, I have a uh, Wolf Whiskers brush that uses, uh, that has the, the color, I can't remember what it's called, um, Evergreen Abyss. So that, that's a normal color on his, uh, on his portfolio. But it was a, a color that I came up with. It was like this kind of, uh, I don't know if turquoise is the right color, but just this kind of, it was a really specific color of green that Peter Wolf liked so much that he made it a standard color option. And so because it, it was, it uh, inspired him to keep it around. I was like, I'm not, I'm not getting rid of that brush ever again. No, thank you. Um, let's shift gears a little bit. Uh, so you've been doing this hobby for a while. Let's talk about some other stuff that I, uh, that kind of tugs at your heartstrings. Uh, what is what are your couple of your favorite artisans, soap makers, and some um, of your favorite scents? <clears throat> uh, PAA, obviously. I mean, I show so much on my channel about that. Um, Sterling is really good. Sterling has some really good scents, and they're strong too. I like. I know some people like lighter kind of scents. I like that in your face type of scent, like you can smell me type thing, like five feet away. Like yeah. I like stuff that projects. I don't like if it's really weak. I'm like, it's kind of it almost like it's like a waste of money because like I can't smell it anymore. Like I want it to project, and I want I want yeah. you guys to smell. Me. I want I want you guys to smell me, kind of. You know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> but not like but not like turning off putting to where you're like, oh my god, dude, you smell like a freaking Italian bath or something, you know? But yeah, so I just I like stuff that like projects. So oh uh, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I've made that mistake Sterling. before. I've I've been in elevators 
with people before where they're just like, let me the hell out. So like, I've learned my lesson with that. Um, so Sterling's good. PAA is good. PAA, it, it, PAA is nuts. Like somebody told me that they actually create their own fragrance oils. Like that's, uh, that's some commitment right there. Like uh, you can say a lot of things about PAA, but one thing you can't say is that they're cutting corners. They, they, when, when it comes to soap making, they are all about that oh. attention to detail. Um, what about razors? What are some of your, uh, some of your favorite razors? Uh, off the top of my, at the moment, I got stuff in here. <laughs> um, Let's see. I don't use it much, but I do. The, it's one of uh, this one right here. <laughs> Edwin Jagger 316. This is a really good razor. It's not aggressive and it's not like um, mild. It's it's a little bit. It's like a step up from the um, like the DE 89 to me. Yeah. But it, it just seems a little bit more, <clears throat> a little bit more smoother. It's and like then, a, it's like a beefed up DE 89, but a little bit higher quality. Yeah, it's like driving a, a better car, I guess you could say. And then this is my very first razor that I got from PA, the original Nickel DOC. Mm -hmm. And this one, I if I'm trying a new blade or DE blade, I'm going right with this thing and using this. It's mild, but it's not. Um, it's not gonna. It well, any razor can cut you up, but um, this is like one of my go tos if I if I'm trying something new. Uh, right. like a DE blade, I always go for that. And like with me, um, here is not very, it's not very coarse. My mustache and my chin area, that's where it's really, really coarse. So like my cheeks and stuff, it's like nothing. So if it can like get me good here and shave good here, then I'm like I'm pretty good on it. So yeah. Um, um what's the what makes a, a dual open comb razor unique? As long as you brought that out, we may as well talk about it. Okay. Uh, what well, what makes it unique, and how does it differ from any other razor? Well, particularly this one, because this one was based on the uh, I can't remember off the top of my head. Not the Keen Cutter. It was based off the a, a self lubricating razor, and what this one partic particularly does is it pretty much self lubricates. Like you got the bottom comb here, and then you got your top cap comb, and then when you're shaving, it actually collects your water and your um soap up in here in this top cap so like particularly this razor instead of just shaving like this and down you can actually use like to buff with so it'd be like because you have that self-lubricating thing to where you can just go over the same spot like a few times and right. it's like self-lubricating so that's what makes that one and then there is got some on the counter there is like the stainless steel one and again, damn cat! <laughs> I got my cats everywhere. I'd like to. Um, I'd like to get my hands on the stainless steel one, but I don't think they make it at the moment, do they? Um, no. I think they still do the copper one, but it's only like, okay, it's available, and you got to jump on it. Like a lot of that stuff. Like, um, I think this one's available. I'm not really sure. Okay. It's the uh, the Ascension one, but it's all pretty much the exact same. Um, concept except for like these ones like you can adjust it like a quarter turn and you can get it aggressive right so it's like the um you razor can make it aggressive lock is another one yeah because you can make it like everybody wants this razor this thing is a beast but if you were to take say the stainless steel doc and you do a quarter turn on it well i don't have a blade in there but you can get that aggressiveness from like that um uh, I can't remember off the top of my head. As Ascent, uh, DOC Ascension. Yeah. Forgot the name. Beard Slayer. They call that one the Beard Slayer. I can't remember. But yeah, you can get the same aggressive. And yeah. So. <laughs> so, so, so you're a big fan of, uh, of PAA stuff, kind of just, just because of close proximity. Like they were, they were there when you started and they were one of the first brands you, you got into. Like when I went to Razor Emporium for the first time, like the very first time I stepped into Razor Emporium at their old shop, I didn't know anything. The only thing I knew from watching videos and stuff was Prorasso. I didn't know what an artesian was. I didn't know anything. 
And when I first went in there, what I was trying to get, because I was in the straight razor shaving, is my razor emporium strop. And this is like the horse hide strop. And that's what I first got. And I told the guy, Nick, <clears throat> I think that's who it was. That's before he had, a, he had a beard and everything. I go, dude, I'm a total noob. I don't know anything. I know what Pro Rasso is. I want that strop. What do you got? And he's like, come over here. Come over here. He's like, have you heard of these guys, uh, Phoenix Artisan Accoutrements? I'm all, Acu Acu what? What? He's like, PAA. I'm all, I have no idea what that means, dude. Like, I'm a total noob. I didn't know anything yeah. at all. These guys make stuff here in Phoenix. And I'm all, oh, that's cool. He's like, I'm going to go to the back. I'm going to go grab you that strop. because I'm not going to sell you the one on the sales floor. I'll get you a brand new one. Look at anything you want in the store. Open any like tub. Smell whatever you want, and I'll be right back. I'm like, okay. Once he left, I went straight for the Parasso. Because <laughs> that's what I knew. I was like, oh, Parasso Red. That's Damn, that smells good. And I'm all, PAA, what? Well, maybe I'll give these guys a chance. So I picked up a couple tubs, and the one I gravitated toward was Speakeasy. Like, that was the one I picked it up. I was like, oh, this one smells pretty good. Okay, I'll get this one. And at the time, I didn't have enough money to buy the Splash. So all I could get was like the strop and like one puck of soap. I'm like, okay, I'll get the splash later. So he comes back out and he's like, did you find something I'm like this right here? He's like, that's a popular one, dude. People like that one. I'm like, it smells really good. He's like, all right, cool. And then I went home and started doing stuff like that. And then the first, because I thought, and I have so many brushes now, but at the first, when I first got, a, got into it, this is my very, very first brush I got from Walmart. Yep, the it's Van Hagen brush. The, Most people have yeah, one of those. And I thought, oh my God, $15? That's so expensive. What if I don't stay in this hobby and I go back to cartridge shaving? I'm like, I just wasted 15 bucks. And now I'm like, <laughs> yeah, you're in it, dude. So, But I still have it. Like, the knot hasn't balled out. It's floppy. But it still works. So, I mean, I actually thought about popping the knot out and putting something really good in there. And people be like, why'd you put a really good knot in a Vanderhagen? I'm like, because I can. It'd be cool. <laughs> Put some high, perf high performance in there, like a SHD Jealousy from AP Shave Co. <laughs> It'd be like, what the hell? It's like, yeah, it's, it's kind of like, uh, it's kind of like rat rods, you know, where uh, they have those high performance cars that are supposed to be hot rods, but they look like crap on purpose. Yeah. You, ju you just swapped the 2JZ into a Honda Civic. Are you kidding me, dude? <laughs> Uh, but yeah, PAA is is uh, is something else. Uh, I have a particular attraction to um, to declaration grooming and Shannon soaps because I grew up in Northern Michigan, and uh, declaration grooming uh, is is and was is still made in Michigan, and uh, Shannon soaps is made in Ohio, so I kind of have a particular attachment to Shannon soaps. Just kind of ever since the death of my beloved through the fire fine craft the, which I was sad to see uh, get out of the soap making business uh Shannon soaps and and declaration grooming and now uh Denton Magic is kind of the brands that I kind of gravitate to and it's just cuz of geographics I want to support you know either Michigan brands or midwestern brands and so I think uh, a lot of people kind of push themselves towards uh towards uh brands that are that are ge that geographically resonate with them yeah. Um, How do you feel about WSP? They're good. Like I have five. I think I've got five of theirs. They're five of their sets. Uh, my favorite one is uh, oh, the top of my head, Dragon's Blood. That one smells so damn good. And yeah, their soaps last a long time. Like <laughs> you could last. Like, am I even denting this soap at all? Like, it's yeah. They, they're it's pretty <laughs> good quality. So. Yeah, I've got uh, Dragon's Blood too. Uh, I think it kind of comes and goes. It maybe it's a seasonal thing. And then yeah, you mentioned a uh, PA Speakeasy. I love that, but you don't see that very often. Like it's one of those where I'm, I'm really worried that uh, that Douglas is going to cull it. Like he's just going to get rid of it because you've never seen anybody use that. Yeah, he better not. But uh, there, there's there's a few of them. Like nobody uses Cold Spices, which I think is the best old school. Uh, old spice dupe there is like cold spices is, is phenomenal but nobody you don't see anybody using it like i, I don't know yeah. why i have it i've used it like quite a few times but i think i've done one or two videos on it but yeah it's it's got a um 
a lot of people get turned off by the there's like a baby powder note to it and like the menthol y kind of stuff like yeah. people like more of like the um straight up old spice kind of scent where that's good it cold spices i like it but i could see where like that powdery stuff would like turn people off from it but i think it's pretty good too though yeah um well a lot of people get kind of put off by cold spices and by barrister and man reserve spice but what a lot of people forget is excuse me uh those two brands with those two particular soaps they are going out of their way to replicate how old spice used to smell rather than some other artisans who are making a soap that smells like how old spice smells right now so when i've, I've seen people do reviews of like cold spices and like barrister man reserve spice and like this doesn't smell like old spice well of course it doesn't because old spice doesn't smell how it used to 50 60 70 years ago yeah so yeah, so, uh, with, yeah. And, and so I, see, I think it's a it's a difference in scent because old spice has evolved same thing with aqua velva aqua velva doesn't smell quite how it used to either it was crazy about aqua velva you say i remember douglas was saying that um the one we have now in the plasticky type container that's actually like the european version and the one that they have over in europe in the glass bottle is like the more of the american version which is kind of weird like you would think we would have our own American version. They would have their more European version, but it's like the total opposite. I'm like, that's that's kind of weird, you know? Yeah, I've heard something similar. So I have the Spanish Aqua Velva that's still in the glass bottle. Mm. And I've heard from a couple of people that that stuff is more along the lines of how United States Aqua Velva used to be. But I haven't heard that the, that the Aqua Velva and the plastic uh, bottles that we have now is more like how the European version used to be. I've just heard that that's kind of how Aqua Velva has devolved as the mm -hmm. American producers of it have been trying to cheapen it and cheapen it to, to save money. So uh, one, one can speculate. I find it fascinating that the Aqua Velva shaving soap doesn't sell. Like he's brought that out uh, temporarily a couple of times. Like the last time he brought it out, just like as a seasonal and I bought a couple of pucks of it. I was like, this might never come back again. So yeah yeah soccer blue like uh, okay. it, it just blows my mind how that did that didn't sell but yet shave chaser apparently does like uh, i just don't i don't know like people's uh preferences are goofy but what are you gonna do what's crazy though is when it comes out the soccer blue comes out you know people they're like oh bring it back bring it back bring it back and then when they bring it back it was like like okay you wanted it back why is it not selling really great you know what i mean and then yeah, like people when are it, asking for it and then crickets yeah and when then it goes away they're like oh why'd you get rid of that why don't you bring it back because you wasn't buying it in the first place <laughs> yeah it uh yeah the, this idea that douglas isn't trying to uh to uh react to what people want is outrageous you we, we gotta remember he's a businessman and that that's you know, putting bread on his table. And so he's got to, he's got to keep uh, on the lineup what sells and he's got to get rid of things that don't. So that's just, that's just how the hobby works. You're going to end up with something that's no longer being made. That's just how it is. Yeah. And like he said before with his, um, <clears throat> the reducers on the um, flashes, like he did the bigger ones and then everyone's like, oh, I can't do it right. I can't flip it upside. Okay. Well, I'm going to do a smaller one. And everyone's like, oh, I don't like the small. He's like, dude, I can't please everybody. Either you like what I have or you don't. It's like, you can't please everybody, but you know? Yeah. Yeah, you can't. And uh, I've always thought that that was a silly sort of thing that people are arguing about. Like, personally, I like the bigger uh, ones because, uh, you know, I have uh, 10 functioning fingers and I can put my finger over top of the bottle and just let as much out as I want. But I, what I think... I think people are watching too many shaving commercials because you've seen all these commercials from like the eighties and nineties where you had people with like aqua velvet and skin bracer, just like dumping it on their hands. And, and it's like, you see these shots where it's just like, where it's just like pouring out of the bottle for an impossibly long time, but you don't see it splashing all over their hand. It's just, it's one of those. And so I think people are picking up stuff that they see on, on TV 
and thinking that that's how it's supposed to be. And then, and then they're like, well, I can't just, I can't just sit there and, and dab on it. But then like the new reducers from PAA, it's, it's like you're freaking just jerking it off. Like, <laughs> like it's a freaking ketchup bottle, dude. It's like, oh, come on. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, like I, I actually thought about taking like a tiny little, like, uh, like a drill bit and just boring it out a little bit more than it is so I can get more out. But I'm like, eh, it is what it is. I'm just going to sit here and. <laughs> so I, I started just taking them out because uh, oh. I had one. What was it? It was Captain Smite's Reserve Bay Rum and Leather. This wasn't supposed to turn into a PAA episode, but here we are. I had the, <laughs> uh, the Captain Smite's Reserve Bay Rum and Leather. And I was using it for the first time, and the reducer, I call it the uh, the rev limiter, because whenever there's no rev limiter, people tend to peel out. You know, I, I think it's funny, but anyway. So, uh, but the the rev limiter came just came out of the top of the bottle, and I spilled it all over. And at first, I was kind of pissed, but then I was like, "Well, now it's basically exactly how I want it. So I can just put my finger over the top of it and let as much out of it as I need to." So that is one option is that you can just take the thing out. Well, we can wrap it up if you like. You got a fragrance to do the frag out? Uh, yeah. And <clears throat> how you were talking about like a uh, scent that nobody uses very much. Astra Planeta. This one is amazing. If you like tobacco type scents, mm -hmm. that yeah, this one is pretty good. So this is another one you don't see many many people use very much. So. I picked you this up like last, I, last week. I'm I'm glad you mentioned that one because I owned it at one point and it was a little too green for me. I ended up selling it to a John Bonham Cape Cod wet shaving and he loves it. But uh, I, I gave it an honest run and I was like, I just can't get behind this one. What, what, what does it smell like to you? I get the tobacco note right up front and then I get the sandalwood in the back. It doesn't really smell green to me. It's It's got a tobacco, like it's got that tobacco leaf type scent. Like I could imagine pairing this with uh, Tob's tobacco leaf. I think it would pair really, really well with that scent. So, but There's an idea. All right, let's spray it yeah. out. I've got the uh, Smiles for Miles uh, Elixir 3, which just uh, came in. Nice. He... I just... Go ahead. I just actually used the rest of this uh last night yeah i thought there i thought there was more in there than i thought but this is the elixir m yeah. oh this one is so so good it's gone <laughs> it's gone but yeah this is a really really good set from him yeah his his stuff is pretty good uh he credits me for giving him the idea for this because uh, i was talking about arabian ouds uh being a uh, oud rose and saffron and so he came up with this which is a uh, oud rose and sandalwood which is still Pretty close, and holy crap, does this smell good? Uh, he was uh, cooking with gas when he made this. Yeah, he's stuff. like, he stepped it up from just brush making to like where he's at now. Like, it's awesome because like he pushed himself. He's like, I want to start doing soaps. I want to start doing like um, EDPs and stuff. And he's like, I got this lady that lives by me. I got this person. I'm gonna do it. I'm like, that's pretty awesome because he started out doing like brush handles and stuff, and then now he's evolved and. Shave line MBD and all that stuff. Yeah, and he's one of those guys that uh, that that needs to be kept busy. Let's put it that way. Uh, well, do you have any parting words of wisdom for the crowd before we get out of here? Um, I don't know. I mean, if you want to get into your own cha channel, do it because <laughs> that's just what I did. I was, to be honest, I was scared as hell. I was like, "Hi, um." I'm Chris and I'm going to be be using this brush today. Like I wish I still had my videos, but yeah, you're going to, if you, if, if you feel something like I thought I had this little tiny spark in me, I was like, man, I want to do this. I was so scared to do it. Cause I thought people around the world are going to be watching my video and I got scared the hell out of me, but I'm like, push through and here I am now. And <laughs> I'm, I'm on your channel. We're talking and this is pretty damned awesome, dude. So yeah, if you got the, if you got that little spark and you want to make videos or even shave it a day photos, like um, Instagram, anything, just do it. And you're going to, you're going to keep going. It's going to be, it might be hard at first, but if you got that spark, just keep going. You're going to evolve. You're going to grow. And here I am today with Ben. 
<laughs> yeah, well, I appreciate it. But let the growth be organic. Um, let me ask you one last question. What have you learned since you've been making videos that you can either give advice to new content creators or new shapers? What are the what are the most important lessons you've learned? Um, well, you don't really. <laughs> If you get in, okay, I'm a YouTuber, I'm a hobbyist. Yes, I have a lot of stuff. I try to make new content all the time. But if you don't want to make videos, you don't want to do that. Just find a couple good razors, a couple good brushes, a couple good scents. You don't have to have 500 soap pucks. Like, find some good stuff that actually works for you. And if it doesn't work for you and you tried it and it doesn't work, it does. then don't use it. Like, I've got razors that just do not work for me. The Astra, the Astra Greens. Everybody loves them. I've tried them so many times. They just don't work for me. So it's a blade I don't use anymore. If you find something that works for you, keep it, hold on to it. And, keep, you know. <laughs> yeah, that is, that's a, one of the one of the things that gets people down the rabbit hole is they find something good and they don't just stop. Like they they try to they try to keep finding something that's that's more more better or different, you know, instead of just like pump the brakes like uh uh because i've had people who got into it and then they were just like i i have to walk away from this it became too much and so i've been trying to tell tell people who i think are on the fence it's like take go slow with this you know you don't not everybody has to be a hobbyist you know right part of me kind of misses the the time when i only had like two or three soaps and two razors and two different brands of blades and a couple of brushes i mean it's too late for me. There's no going back. But uh, if you don't want to uh, throw yourself into this hobby, you don't have to. It, it oh. can be utilitarian. I spent three years shaving uh, and saving money. Just uh, just had a couple of soaps, a couple hundred packs of blades, and a couple brushes and a couple of razors. That was it. So that's it, it can be done. You can save money that way. That's all you really need, really. I mean, if... It, it can't if uh, I know there's a lot of jokes out there like, oh, I'm down the rabbit hole. I thought this would save me money. If you do it like how you were saying, you will save money. I mean, a hundred pack of blades, that's way less cheaper than like going and getting a cartridge razor. So if you find a couple cents that work for you, it's good. It will save you money in the long run. It just, if you go crazy then. Yeah. You, you got to have that <laughs> self-discipline. <laughs> right. Well, Chris, I want to thank you for coming on here. It's been a pleasure. It's been really fun. I will go ahead and put Chris's information down here and up there if I haven't already in some somewhere else in the video. I want to thank everybody for watching. And until next time, this is Soap Thing telling you, shave like you mean it. Thanks for watching.